Hey guys, welcome to my soap list. Today I'm super excited to be showing off the Baby Lock Brilliant. If you've been around for a while, you know how much I love this machine and love working with it every day and using it for all my sewing projects. This is just a great overall machine for anyone who's a beginner to an advanced sewist. Um, if you want to do all the things in sewing and create all the projects, this is a great, great machine to have. And I'm going to show you all the features on it because um, every machine is so different. And if you are looking to get a new machine, it's always helpful to know all the features on it so that you know if it does exactly what you need it to because everyone does different types of sewing. And um, I don't know if yours is the same as mine. So I'm just going to share what I know about this machine and what I love to use it for. And we're also going to talk about how to thread this machine. So let's get started. So first up, I want to show you this side of the machine. So right here we have our hand wheel. This is what makes the needle go up and down if you're not touching the foot pedal. So you always want to turn it towards you instead of away from you when you're facing the machine. Right now I can't turn it towards me because I'm behind the machine. But then we also have our on and off switch and this is where I would plug in for power. And this little spot right here, that is where you're going to plug in your foot pedal. So it's actually not attached to the power cord. Um, some machines are, it just depends on the machine. This one is separate, so you'll plug it in right there. Okay, then going to the front of the machine, before we open this up right here, right here on this spot, this is for um, a lever that you can put in that will raise and lower your presser foot. It's an attachment so that your knee can do it and you don't have to be doing it with your hand. So that's a nice option. I know some people, it makes them go a lot quicker. Um, I don't prefer it, but it just kind of depends on what you like and um, what you get used to. I think it just takes some time to get used to and I just haven't taken that time. So that's always nice to have. And then we have our LCD screen which then has all these other options. I'm not gonna go through all of these buttons right here, uh, mostly because that would be a really, really long video, but maybe I will do another video on our options and what everything is over here, because there's a lot of information and a lot of um, different things that you can do with, do with this machine and with this LCD screen. So we might have to do that, so look for that in the future. And then over here, these are going to be your controls for this one right here is going to be your control for speed. So this one, you can go slower or faster. And again, that's also going to depend on how hard you push your foot pedal. So do keep that in mind. But if you want to go super fast, if you're advanced and you like that, you can do that. Or if you're a very new beginner, you can go as slow as you need to. And it's really nice, especially when you're teaching kids how to sew, that is handy. So then we have our thread cutter, those little scissors right there. Um, that This one with the needle, it raises and lowers your needle. And then we have this circle one. So that is going to be, um, when you have that press, it's going to lock in your stitches. So it's going to do stitches in the same spot a few times. Um, to lock them in place. So that's good for like if you're doing applique or if you're um, embroidering something and you just want to lock in and end that stitch instead of a back stitch, you have something like that. And then the one below it is going to be our back stitch. So you just press that to go backwards. And then we have our start and stop button. So that's pretty self-explanatory, start and stop. So then we have this lever right here and this is going to pop down our needle um, threader so I will show you in a little bit how to do that but that's how you engage it you just press it down so if I just turn a machine scoot back a little bit so you guys can see um, that's that lever that I just showed and then on the back we have we have this lever that you can raise and lower the presser foot with so if you're not using the knee one this is what you'll be using so those are all the features on the outside of the machine right here that are not underneath this case right here. And again, like I said, maybe I'll just create another tutorial for this panel right here. I think that would be a lot easier than just reading off exactly what the buttons do. But it does say in your manual what all these buttons will do. So I'll make sure to um, cover that in the video 
and help you out there. Um, there are just some really handy ones. I mean, this is where you would get like your stitch length, your stitch width for zigzags. And then you also have things like your automatic cutter, your automatic reverse. Um, so things like that, but then all different stitches, you can program in the stitches, program in your needle position. Um, so lots of options. So that's the basics. The ones up here, the plus and minus signs are going to be the ones that are going to change the stitch lengths and the stitch widths. So those are nice, especially when you're doing zigzags or different specialty stitches. So now we can open up our cover right here. There's a little lip right here that you can just grab onto and pop that open. It just sits like this. And I really like how this one, it shows you lots of different stitches that you can use. So you can keep those in mind. I feel like if they're out of sight, they're kind of out of my mind and I don't even think about them. So it's nice to see them there and see my options. And then when I'm doing a project, I'm like, oh yeah, I can use that. And it would look really cool. Or that decorative stitch would look really awesome as this top stitch kind of thing. So that's a really nice feature. Um, other than this, starting on the side right here, I'm gonna show you a little closer. So this is our bobbin winder. I'm gonna show you guys how to use that in a moment. But this, we put our bobbin on right here. This stops the bobbin um, from winding. This right here is our spool holder. If I take the spool off, that's what's holding it. Um, this is our tension for winding our bobbin. And then over here, we have all the things that we need to thread. So these levers are all for threading. Um, and I love on the machines, they show you step by step. So like step one, step two, step three, and then four is up here. So I'm going to go through that as well. But this just gives you a great idea of everything that is on the machine before we dive in to all the threading. Um, and then right here, this dial is our thread tension dial. So I typically just leave it at a four. I haven't had to mess with it, but if you ever need to, um, there's all these grooves and there's a line right on top that shows you what you're at um, and what it's set at. So just line it up with that line when you need to, and you can adjust that tension if needed to and really for the most part I don't touch it at all so unless something were to happen or a kid would touch it then I would be messing with it but luckily that doesn't happen and this keeps it covered and protected so now let's go back down to the bottom and show you the features down here where our bobbin drop-in case is okay so here is a closer look at our needle and our presser foot and all the workings that are down here so let me take you step by step and show you kind of some of the features of this. So back here we have the needle plate. That's gonna be giving us um, seam allowances in our seam allowance guide. So you have your numbers right back here and lines to help you line your fabric up. Let me get my thread out of the way, it's kind of annoying. And then we have that needle. Like I said earlier, this right here is going to be our um, automatic needle threader. And I'm gonna show you how to use that later. Um, this is our needle plate cover. And then we have the bobbin cover right here and how to get into the bobbin. So there's a little lever right here with an arrow. So it's hard to not understand how to do it, but you just pop that up and that's how you can pull that bobbin up. I just pull that out with my fingers and pull that out. And then when you need to, you can just pop that back in, slide. Let's see if I can show you without getting my hand in the way. So there's a little lip right there. You just slide that under and then it just pushes right back in place. So that's really nice. I'll show you how to put that bobbin back in in a moment. Um, this is going to be our presser foot. And on the back, there's going to be a little black button. Let me show that to you. Right here, we have that button. And you just press that to take your presser foot off. And you can change those out. And then there's a line right there. That's where you attach it to this. And I just kind of, I like to line it up, especially with my nails, make it hard. And push my the presser foot, um, arm down and then it kind of can just lock in place and I can pick it back up 
and it's all ready to go. So I really like to do it that way. Brighten that. So that lever is for that. So this lever right here is for when you're gonna do buttonholes. Um, it's important to use that. And then if I keep turning this, again, you can see there's our presser foot handle. So it's just right along the back side. So let's come back to the front. And you can see right here we have thread cutter um, for your bobbin. Right here, we have thread cutter for your upper threads for this thread right here. And then this black piece right here, if you twist it, try not to get my hands in the way, but I also don't want to drop the needle. But if you twist it towards you, it loosens that needle. And then I can just pull it out. Just like that. And then again, put it back in. And the needle has a flat part. You just want to line that flat part up with the back. Oh, I can't do it from that angle. <laughs> okay, let's see. We can do it. Okay, there we go. So you just slide it up there, hold it in place, and then twist it away from you to tighten it. And it just tightens the needle back up. You just want to make sure it is raised up all the way so it's not going to fall out later. So that's how you're going to do that. Other than that, I think that covers all of the pieces right here. If you have any questions, if there's anything I'm missing, um, please let me know in the comments down below and I will try to cover those and answer your questions in the comments. So when we scoop back a little bit, we then have this opening on the front of the arm and I can just pop that open like so. So this has a place for all my different feet. So I can just take those out and then put my other foot in its spot when it's not being used. Here's your buttonhole foot um, and then all these other different ones, which I can do another video on if you wanna see all the different uses for these feet. It also has storage for bobbins um, or a seam rubber. And then you can even take that out and there's a little bit of room underneath and on the side. So that is really handy, really nice. I love how it just stays with the machine at all times so I'm never misplacing feet. And it's really nice because my kids don't really know about it and so they don't know <laughs> to stay out of that and that there's feet hiding in it so I don't lose anything, which is awesome. So I believe that covers, I think we covered all of the things. If there, again, if there's anything I missed, please let me know and I will try and get that covered for you guys. Um, Oh, one thing that I'm thinking of right now is under the presser foot is your feed dogs. And that helps feed, just kind of like the, the name of it. It feeds the fabric through. Um, so those are back there. And you can kind of rub your finger along them to feel them. And you can actually lower and raise your feed dogs. So if you take your hand right here, there's a little opening. And you just pull that. This whole case can come off. So I'm just gonna set that off to the side and then I can turn the machine around and there is this little part right here that slides. And this part, I can slide to one way or the other way and it shows that the feed dogs are down. So now run your finger along it and I can't feel the feed dogs. So that means it wouldn't move the fabric at all. It would just stay in place and the fabric wouldn't go anywhere. So normally you're gonna keep those up. There are certain times when you want those down. So, and then once I um, start using it, the feed dogs will come back up. So if I run my um, hand wheel, they just came back up when I did that. So that is how you access the raising and lowering of your feed dogs. And I can just turn that back around and this will slide back on. So that's also a good thing to know if you ever need to take this off, if you're doing something round, um, say like an, um, a sleeve hem or putting a sleeve in and you just need that smaller, smaller space, smaller arm of the sewing machine, um, you can always take that off and do that. And now I wanna get on to how to thread your sewing machine. One thing to remember when you are threading a sewing machine um, or replacing the thread on a sewing machine is you always want to cut it and then 
pull it through at the bottom. You never want to just take this spool off and then pull it all the way back through because that can be damaging to your machine. So always keep that in mind. And I'm gonna use a darker color so that way it's easier for you guys to see it. Hopefully that helps make this easier. And when you put your spool on, you wanna make sure, I love how they have this picture right here, make sure that your thread is going underneath and then over the top. And then this will hold your thread on so it's not falling off as you sew. So before we actually thread the machine, I first want to show you how to wind a bobbin on this machine. So you're going to take your thread, you do steps one and two, which are going around this plastic part right here, down underneath this lever. And then you can see how there's a one, a one, a two, and a two. So we're following the twos and ones with the circle on them. So it says go back around. We're gonna go over this, which is our tension disc. And it even shows you how to lay the thread in there. So you come up around and then go through. Let me try that again. Make sure it looks right for you. There we go. Okay, and then we'll come over here and my bobbin right here, always make sure you're using the right size bobbin for your machine and pop that in place. And then it even shows you how the thread's gonna come in. So it just comes in around. I wrap it around a few times and I love how on this bobbin it even has, I'm trying to turn it to show you. It's always so tricky with nails on. But there's a little slot right here that will cut your thread and hold it in place. So I just slide it over that and cut it. And now it is ready to go. I love that feature on it. I think it's really cool. And then you just pop it over to the right and it will be pressed against this. This is gonna stop your bobbin so that it doesn't get too full and then it wouldn't fit in, in your bobbin casing. So we wanna make sure that's there. And then I'm just gonna push down on my presser foot and it's gonna start winding. Now, if it's not in the tension disc correctly, this winding is not gonna look good. So let me show you. See how tight it is? It's nice, good winding. So I'm actually not gonna wind it all the way because I don't need that much green thread. Um, I actually usually just use black and white most of the time, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. But if you push it over and wind it, it will actually stop winding once it's reached its limit. And then you can just pop it off. Your cutter right there. See how there's two on both sides? Perfect. And now my bobbin is ready to go and I can set that off to the side. So now I'm ready to continue threading my machine. Let me get to the right angle. And I'm actually just gonna take this off the tension disc right there and leave it at step two. Now, if you need to, you can go through step one and two again you just come around this lever and loop it right there. Then we're, instead of going over to the right, like we are, were for winding the bobbin, we're gonna go over to the left and follow the arrows. So this arrow goes down and around. Oh, I just lost my thread. Oh, there we go, okay. So it's just going down and then down here. So it comes down here, you can see number three has a loop around, so you just loop that and we go back up. At the top, we're going for number four. There's this lever inside of there. And if you just turn um, your hand wheel, we're gonna turn it so that that lever is as high as it can go. And you just kind of have to look down in there and you wanna catch the lever. So once your thread is attached to it, it will take it and go up and down. And um, you'll feel that and see that later on. And then we can just come back down and follow down to number five. There's this little hook right there in front of the needle. We're gonna just hook it behind there and then we're ready to thread our needle. Typically, I just do it by hand, just like this. But there's also the option to use your needle threader. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to do that. So I have my thread behind this lever right here. Let me turn it 
So this one right here, see how it has the number six right above it. The thread's right, the thread is right um, behind that. And then see on the needle threader, this little notch right there. I'm gonna go through that notch and then there's a number seven right where my thread is. And I'm just gonna go up, I'm gonna pull it tight. It went up in there. That's where my thread is right now. And then I'm gonna go behind and cut the thread which kind of holds it up there. So now I'm ready to come back up to the top. So this lever right up here that was on the left-hand side and pull that all the way down and it just pops it right in. See how quick, easy that is? And then I can pull my thread through, make a longer tail so that it doesn't fall out of that needle. But now it's ready for the top part at least to sew. So that's super easy. If you don't use um, your needle threader, this guy right here, you don't have to do step seven. You just go from six, which that actually popped out of six. So you just go behind that lever and then thread your needle if you don't wanna use the needle threader. So now we can put our bobbin in, which is super easy. It's really nice on this machine. So like I said earlier, you just pull this over to the right hand side to pull that out. And then you have your little spot for your bobbin. And I'm gonna take, here's my bobbin that I threaded earlier. And there's even a little picture right here that shows you how the thread is supposed to go, which is so handy. Cause you just lay your bobbin in there. I literally just set it in there, pull my thread a little bit. And then there's this curve right here that goes up and around. I'm just gonna take my thread, pull it over, up, and around and then there's a knife right there that just cuts it and it's all done and I just put this back on push it back into place and it is now ready so pull that bobbin thread up I like to hold my thread and then turn my hand wheel towards me and if I pull that thread or just slide my finger under you can see it has now pulled a piece of it now I gotta grab it, <laughs> grab it with my nails. It has pulled that bobbin thread up. So we'll just pull that to the back. And if I need to, I can do it again. It'll just pull that up. And then I have, here's my little bobbin thread. I need my tweezers, there we go. So I just pulled that to the back. And now I am ready to sew. my machine is threaded. All right, guys, I hope you found that tutorial and all that information helpful. Again, like I said earlier, if you have any questions, comments, if there's something I missed, please let me know down in the comments below and I will get that covered for you. And I'll put links down below for all the tutorials that I have done with this machine already. Like I said, I love this machine. It's a great machine for any um, level of sewer. So I'll leave a link down below for this machine. You can go check it out. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my other sewing tutorials and give this video a thumbs up. I will see you guys next time. Bye!